Hi everyone. So sorry that I'm late today. Unfortunately, my iPad was dying, so I'm right now I'm trying to get it so that it hooked on so that I can get more um, charging it, okay? Let me change my earbuds here a little bit. All right. Okay, so today is the last day for the five days freelance writing tips today. So if you're here, please let me know that you're here and um, please introduce yourself and say hi to me. All right, so for the last session today, we're going to talk about the top ways to find freelance writing clients online, okay? Um, we've talked a lot about new things for freelance writers, right? About your niche, about try to find some time, and how you can be a profitable writer, right? I talked about all these strategies and all these tips to help you get going, right? Because, you know, I really want to help you if you're a new writer that's struggling because, you know, I was in your shoes um, almost three years ago. You know, I was brand, brand new to freelance writing and anything online. You know, before I was uh, doing this, I was working in a school. You know, my expertise is actually in children with autism, right? Doing um, ABA therapy, which is applied behavioral analysis therapy. I have a psychology background, so that that helped me land those um, those jobs. I was going into people's homes and doing behavioral therapy with children with autism. And for a while, I really thought that that was my plan. That's where I was going to be. But a lot of things changed. I was doing that in when I was in um, in college, in university. So I was really young and I was just getting to figure out what I wanted to do. And it wasn't until I had my twins and after I had my twins that I knew that I didn't want to go back to that I didn't want to um, be away from them. You know, as a mom that's brand new to children, I wanted to stay home, right? So I figured, you know, to find some way to to at least get some kind of income while I was being a new mom, right? And what was kind of nice is that my husband sort of was doing this already. He's always had some form of online business um, since I've ever met him. So it was nothing for him to say to me, look, well, why don't you just find something online to do? And he suggested to me, you know, virtual, being a virtual assistant. And, you know, when he first told me that, I kind of laughed at him. Like, I had no idea what he meant by, like, this virtual world of assisting. Like, I'm like, do you get paid in virtual dollars? Like, I was so brand new. Um, I think all I went on was, I think I saw YouTube videos, I was on Facebook occasionally, and Amazon. I liked going on Amazon and, and buying books and things like that. Like, that's all I used the internet for before I became a freelance writer. So, I mean, I was pretty brand new to all of this. So, and that's where my passion lies. I really want to help you. Whether you're struggling and you've been trying to do this on yourself with your on your own for a while, or you're, you're just brand new. You, you're trying to figure out what, where the clients are, how you're supposed to set this up and all that. I totally get you. So today, um, that's why I wanted to talk about the top ways. I think the top ways that you can find freelance writing clients online. All right. The first way, um, that I recommend is, is to start cold pitching. Now, it's kind of daunting for a brand, brand, brand new person that's into freelance writing. So, you know, I think maybe you should um, research cold pitching, research, um, understand your niche, understand your client before you start cold pitching. And we did talk about finding your profitable niche. I think it was yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, from there, you start honing in on your client. You know, who is your ideal client? And once you figure that out, then you can start cold pitching. And what cold pitching is, it's the ability to find businesses that aren't hiring freelance writers, aren't looking for freelance writers, and introdu introducing yourself that you have a service-based business and that you could help them with your service-based business, right? It's a very cold email pitch kind of thing. That's that's basically what it is. You, it's a complete... 
Um, it's it's a cold, like they're a stranger basically. They don't know you. Um, but what's so great about cold pitching is that there's no competition. Um, you're going to be probably the only person that's going to be pitching at that time to that that business or that solopreneur or um, that publication or, or editor or whatever. Like you might be that only person. So that immediately gets you in the front runner as the person to, you know, to get hired. And what's so neat is that if you're that only person that that company has ever sort of um, had a relationship with, they are looking at you as the professional person that is an expert, right? You're that expert that's coming to them. And so that's why I like cold pitching because it sort of sets you up on this, um, this pedestal basically that, you know, I can help you and let me show you how with my writing. Um, now there are two types of businesses that you can cold pitch the, Again, my experience is with small businesses. So that's my world. Um, I'm not talking about cold pitching to magazines and to get uh, pitching stories to big publications and things like that. That's a whole different ballgame. And that's, um, that's cold pitching is expected in, those, in that type of um, industry. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about actually um, going out there and finding um, small businesses online and pitching your services to them. So there are two types of businesses um, that you can pitch to. You can pitch to businesses that um, have an established blog already, right? Now remember, my background is in blog writing and the best type of client that you can get is a recurring client and recurring clients are usually blog clients, okay? So um, you can pitch to a company that already has a, an established blog. You might notice that they have um, different writers on their blog. So that's um, a great um, way to weasel your way into that, um, into that content schedule. If, they, if you already know that they hire writers, then the likelihood of them hiring another writer, is, it could be high. You don't know the relationship that they have with the other writers. You don't know if one of those writers aren't meeting deadlines, um, aren't writing and gaining content. Um, you might be there at the right time for them. The other type of client business that you can pitch to are businesses that don't have a strong online presence and therefore don't have a blog yet. Um, and this is where your industry knowledge comes in handy as an online writer. Um, since my background is in digital marketing, I sort of understand the, the strategy to, for um, companies that use content marketing um, as an inbound process, right? So this is what you can tell small businesses that don't have a blog and you can let them know that, hey, you know, if you have a blog that will help you with your inbound process to start capturing leads. And I can help you with that by giving you content to attract those clients or attract those um, customers to your site get them on board to your email list and then you can start pitching to them like there's a whole process that businesses take and it may not be that simple but uh, usually businesses if they have a blog they want that that low entry um, way, way to their brand and business and you can be that you can be that person that writes that content to attract those um people so those are two types of companies that you can pitch to um all right and your pitch strategy, like I was mentioning, it will, will differ depending on which, whether that uh, business has a blog or not, right? So you're going to pitch more, um, more heavily to the idea of having a blog um, before you pitch your service, basically, to those types of companies versus um, a, one that already has a blog. You're pitching more heavily on your service-based business and how you, as a, as you, as a freelance writer, can help them with their growing their brand or the business or their income. Now, where do you find these potential clients to cold pitch? Um, the best ways, sorry about that. The best ways are um, raw. So like going to Google and just searching for, you know, startups in your niche. Um, that's the easiest way. Um, you can also locate directories that will list uh, um, companies. Um, 
One that I like is Manta, Manta.com. So if you go to Manta.com and you don't put your location because you want to have the biggest um, results, right? So anywhere online. Now, if you're a freelance writer online, I get a lot of questions from people saying, especially for my course on Write Your Way to Your First 1K, they ask me specifically, is this course applicable to someone in the UK? Is this course applicable to someone in Australia, in Africa, in Cuba, wherever, you know? And I always tell them that, of course it is. You know, the, the strategies that I teach on my in my course and on my blog, you know, help writers online. You know, my job is to get people started online to finding online clients wherever you are. Um, most of my clients are elsewhere. They aren't in where I am. I'm in Canada. I have... Um, like I have worked with several Canadian clients, but most of my clients are either in the States, in Tel Aviv, in the UK, in, yeah, all over the place. Okay, so, um, sorry, I was going on a tangent there about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you, on Manta.com, remove that location and search your niche. And hopefully you'll get some companies. So if you're, um, let's say that you're doing like um, something with, with food, like you want to sort of be in the food industry, um, writing things about um, healthy food or maybe marketing some kind of um, product, a food product, maybe a coffee company. Um, those are things that you can search online and on Manta, sorry. And you can look at those companies. Um, if they have a website, you can go to the website and you can toot around, look around, see if they have any marketing strategies. Do they have an email list? Do they have a blog? Uh, is there a lead magnet that's noticeable? These little things will tell you if they, um, if they have some kind of process to attract leads. Um, so implant yourself by cold pitching to them. Okay. I'm not going to go into, um, how to write a cold pitch, um, I have a lot of templates in my course, Write Your Way to Your First 1K, that are specific to cold pitching. And I believe I have some pitches that are specific to those that have a blog and those that don't have a blog. So um, I recommend those. But as far as finding those companies first, that's where you want to dig deep is is online, in, in looking on Google, looking at these directories. All right. Just say hi if you're here. <laughs> I want to get to know everyone. So the second way you can find a freelance writing client online is through job boards. Now I've talked a lot about job boards in these last couple days, and I personally like job boards. Um, some big freelancers don't or freelance writers don't recommend using job boards simply because they feel that the jobs are low quality and low paying. Now, you know, these writers might be, um, in the like 10 or 5% of all writers online that make more than, you know, a dollar per word. You know, there are very few writers online that, that are making that. Um, I put something on my Facebook page about, you know, most writers are making below 25 cents a word, right? I'm, I'm above that, and, but I took a while to get to that. And just to let you know, I'm going to put a link in the comments about um, my guide um, of how to accelerate your freelance writing income in seven easy steps. So going from like $50 a post to up to like 600 or more a dollar post, um, I lay down those steps um, because that's where I want you guys going. I, I don't want you to stay in this five cents a word, 10 cents a word um, realm. I, you need to grow. If you want to make a living as, as a writer doing this, you need to raise your rate. You need to have um, find your worth and find those high paying clients. And you know what? Job boards, there are high paying clients on job boards. You just have to weed through the ones that aren't. <laughs> um, but for me, like I said, I disagree. I think job boards are a great starting point for new writers. Now, I don't want you to, to stay with job boards and that's the only way that you find clients. You know, I will use a job board every once in a while, but these are these are different types of job boards. And I'll talk about them a little bit later. But those types of job boards yield high paying clients for me. Um, and it's real easy to sift through job, job ads. All right. So as I was saying, the first, the first real gig that I landed was on a job board. 
and they paid me 10 cents a word. That was my first, my first gig. So aside from um, me like making tons of mistakes, doing content mills and doing all that nasty, nasty stuff. Um, once I, you know, like restarted and did the right way, I landed my first client at 10 cents a word. So I think there are um, even now clients that are offering much more than that on job boards. So job boards are good for new writers. So I have my little um, reasons here. So I'm just going to be looking down just because I don't want to mess this up. But um, job sites have fresh jobs daily or hourly. So when you um, visit job boards, I recommend that you visit them at least twice a day because a lot of them are going fast and they're putting new job, or job boards all the time. So visit them at least two times a day. Um, they, job boards usually have a low entry point. So in other words, um, a lot of ads don't stipulate that you need a lot of experience to land that, to have that gig. Um, but like I said, some jobs do. Some jobs are very um, stringent on exactly what they want. Um, they might say they need a writer with two years experience writing in this niche. They might require that you, you provide at least six samples um, and that you've worked with, you know, um, influencers, you know, little things like that. Um, but most jobs um, that are pretty good paying will have a low entry point so that it's easy for new freelance writers to, to get there and land that gig. And finally, um, you can apply to numerous ads um, just using one job board. So um, I recommend that you use a couple job boards, but you can spend the time just focusing on one job board and you can find a lot of ads to pitch to. So let's talk about my top picks for job boards. Now, I like, like I said, I use, I use pay, I paid job board, but I'll um, talk about some free ones and a paid one. Now, my top free ones are problogger.com and freelancewriting.com. Those two job boards um, yield the best and curate the best of the best, I feel, potential gigs out there. I actually landed that, that my first gig at 10 cents a word on freelancewriting.com on their job board. Now they have several different job boards, so you have to go through all of them, but it's nice because it's one place with several different types of job boards. And they also have a newsletter newsletter called um, the, the Morning Coffee Newsletter. Get onto that and you'll get emailed every week the top uh, freelance writing jobs that are high paying. So write in your inbox, pretty easy, right? And um, so yeah, so those are the top two free ones. Now the top paid one that I recommend is Contenna. And I personally like Contenna because it is super, super fast for me to find exactly what I want. Um, you know, I'm pretty busy. So when I, get, when I go on and log on to Contenna, I can search my digital marketing niche and search and also pick um, the, the rate that I want and just find those jobs within that rate. And super easy, click on the ad, click on if there's an application, find where I can email them and boom, I can, I can do some pitchy right there in, you know, while my twins are watching a show or my twins are playing an iPad game or doing something that's not like tearing their hair apart. So, <laughs> um, super easy. So I like using Contenna. All right. Now the third method to landing freelance writing clients online is through social media. Blah, 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 blah. Through social media. Um, if you're a freelance writer, then I strongly encourage you that you have a strong social media presence. Um, it's, it's very hard if you don't want to show your face, if you want to sort of um, be in your little um, cocoon of your of your little laptop and your email, and you don't really want to associate with other writers. You really don't want to associate people on Twitter or read other blogs or get to know any other people that are writing. You just want to sort of focus in your own little, you know, cubicle here and do this on your own. You're going to have a hard time. Um, if you don't have any connections, it's going to be hard. So 
I recommend that you you feel comfortable in your skin, you feel comfortable with who you are, and you go out there and you show everyone who you are, right? Tell everyone that you're a freelance writer. So, and go on the various social media profiles. I recommend the top ones that I recommend it are Twitter and LinkedIn. Those two have yielded me the most work out of all the social media profiles that I'm on. Um, the next one is Pinterest, actually. Um, and then Facebook, I personally haven't had any, well, I did have some inquiry inquiries come my way, but um, it didn't really result in anything. But that might just be because I don't check my messages on Facebook. It's very rare. So I could have had these inquiries that were sitting in my Facebook messages for weeks. So um, that was probably why I didn't land any, land any gigs that way. But um, those are the top the um, order. So Twitter, for sure, for sure. Then LinkedIn, then Pinterest, and then Facebook. I suggest you do get on all of those social media profile uh, platforms. Get your profile up. Make sure that everyone is consistent, that everyone has the same type of language that you use, and sort of the same branding. So how you brand yourself. If it's a certain image, if it's a, a certain way that um, you, you title yourself, it's all similar. Um, once you have that, then you can start integrating yourself online and trying to find those clients on social media. So, you know, I recommend start guest posting on the sites that you want to write for. If they allow guest posting, go and guest post on those sites. Um, if not, comment on their site. Um, get on the radar of these influencers, of these bloggers in this industry. Um, and also follow them on Twitter. Um, those sort of methods have helped me in the past land gigs. So you just want to get out there. Now, as far as approaching them afterwards, I mean, this is all leading into what I think of social media as a warm pitching strategy. So I'm not going to go into what warm pitching is and how to do that, but basically it's just networking, a lot of networking and growing that relationship, that, that relationship that's blossoming and then finding that right time to approach them and to do sort of like a soft pitch, right? That's all um, successful on social media and you can totally do that. All right. And the fourth, the fourth one, I don't know if I'm talking a bit fast here, but the fourth one that um, I recommend is having a dedicated website for your service. So for us, it's a writer website. If it's, if you're a VA, then it's your VA website, right? So it's important to have, again, that online presence and have that home base. So create a, a writer website that shows off your service, that shows off what you can do. Um, I also, I get a lot of questions also about, well, I have a blog already. Can I use that? That's my writer website. And I say, sure, go ahead. Um, use your blog, put a page, you know, on the menu and have a service page there. Have a hire me page there. Um, you know, it's, it's hit and miss whether you're going to get inquiries and whether you can really grow your freelance writing business off of your blog. Um, I haven't had much success that way. Um, maybe others have, but again, I haven't put any pages on my Twins Mommy blog saying that I am a freelance writer for hire. Um, I just blog about it constantly that I am a freelance writer. So um, if someone was really interested, and I've gotten inquiries, like I said, through through my Twins Mommy blog, but it's very rare. It might be one a month, whereas on my writer website, I'm getting um, leads almost daily. So it's much more effective when you have a dedicated website for your business. And, um, you know, that's my passion. I love, I love the whole, um, inbound process of your writer website. Um, you know, when you got to think about it, you're the solopreneur yourself, you're the entrepreneur yourself. So you need a strategy just like those other businesses that you're pitching to. You also need a strategy for, um, attracting clients for landing client work. Right? So, um, when you think about it that way, yeah, you, you should have an online presence. You should have a writer website. And you should start that process of attracting those clients.
Now, my course, Write Your Way to Your First 1K, has a whole module called your writer platform. So building your writer platform is what I call it, which is that whole online presence um, from your website to social media to your brand. All of that is laid out nicely in um, step-by-step lessons on how to really build that writer platform. Because I've always said you need a strong foundation in the bottom so that you can grow and grow and grow your business successfully, right? And the writer website or your writer website is the perfect way to start growing your business and to make it legit, you know, like this is it. Like this is the point where you're not doing this on the side as a passion. This is now a business and it's a big step for a lot of writers. It's, it's very daunting and overwhelming and you don't want to put yourself out there and you're scared. And I totally, totally get that. Um, but you, you have to start taking action somehow, right? You have to get out there somehow and you can do it slowly. Um, you know, if, if you already have a blog, well then start there, start with having a page. And then if you are more confident, then, you know, get a writer website and set that up or, um, or a portfolio site. So like something like contently and build your portfolio there, something, something else that like that shows that you are a writer. And also optimizing your social media presence, right? So that people know that you're the writer. So I get a lot of, um, when I go on Twitter and I I research, and I go through the people that follow me, I get a lot of followers a day of writers and I look at their profiles and a lot of them don't really tell me much about it. They might have um, writing, like a lover, lover, love of writing um, as sort of something in their description, right? Some of them do have freelance writer, but that's it. They don't tell me. They tell me they're a freelance writer and a cat lover. They don't tell me what niche. They don't tell me what publications they've been featured in. They don't tell me much of anything, right? And then their link is to their blog about cats <laughs> or something, right? I could only assume that maybe they like cats and they're in the pet industry. But it's like if you're a prospect looking at that Twitter profile, they're not going to get confident, have any confidence that you are the right candidate for them. They're going to go on to a someone else that has a very optimized social media presence and optimized Twitter profile, right? And um, yeah, so those are the four things that are the four ways that you can land clients. There are so, so many ways that you can land and find clients. You know, my course has up over 95 ways, legit ways that you can find clients. Um, those are all the ways that I mentioned in my course. And then I can, I put it in a handy cheat sheet so that you can just have that cheat sheet, go through it and look, it has all the links to all the, um, the ways to cold pitch. I have, I think 27, 20 profitable job boards. Like these are profitable job boards. These aren't the ones that you see online all the time. These are profitable job boards. You know, like I have those all in that cheat sheet. So that by itself, I think is worth, worth everything. Um, for this course. So, and it will help you. But anyway, so that's, those are things. If you have, if if anyone has any questions about job boards, about cold pitching, social media, or your writer website, let me know, put them in the comments. Um, You can ask them right now. Um, I apologize again for being so late. And I'll put the link to the free guide that I have called Accelerate Your Freelance Writing Income in Seven Easy Steps. Um, I, this is a a free guide that I wrote just for these five days of freelance writing tips, um, because I really want to help struggling writers become a profitable writer. And, uh, those seven steps are what helped me boost my income tremendously. All right, everyone. Um, thank you so much for, uh, these five days. I love, love, love doing Facebook lives and helping you. And I love the engagement and discussion afterwards. Please ask all your questions. And you know, if this is a something that um, everyone else enjoys, I might do this a bit more often, maybe not in five day chunks, but I might probably will do more Facebook live sessions if you want it. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.